along with a great amount of Puerto Rican pride and support for native son Edwin Rosario, his second title offense against Howard Davis, and there is Rosario triumphantly coming into the ring with his partisan crowd cheering him all the way, and fans not only here, but I think across the United States will soon become fans, if they haven't already, of Rosario. Edwin Rosario with the 27-0 on his record in 25 knockouts, that is not entirely verifiable because in the early days of his career, he fought eight bouts in the surrounding Caribbean islands, and so the official record has to be eight less than that, 19 and all, stopping 17 opponents, but there's no doubt about one thing, he's the reigning WBC champion. And there is his wife and eight-month-old baby daughter. We showed you earlier he got to spend one day away from training uh, for Father's Day last Sunday with his young family. Howard Davis, as you know, a family man also. The number two WBC contender. His record, 26-1. and one. He has knocked out 11. But Howard Davis, in the comeback attempt he has made to get this second title shot, is but on a tear. He has won his last 13 bouts in a row. And so, there's support for both these fighters, but make no mistake, the man getting most of the support is Edwin Rosario, although from Long Island comes some fans backing their man, Howard Davis Jr. Both fighters have their fathers in their corner today. Antonio Rosario, the father of the champion, and Howard Davis Sr., the father of the challenger. There he is, Howard Davis Jr., will work in his son's corner. The referee is Mike Jacobs of London, England, and three ringside judges will decide it. If it goes the 12 Angel Castillo Tavar of Venezuela, and Sidney Nathan of England. The ring here, a little over 20 by 20, about 20 feet 6 inches square, as uh, this ring here in Puerto Rico has seen some electrifying fights, and many of them have been supplied by this man, Rosario. He was out of action 14 months. He broke his right wrist against Jose Luis Ramirez, the man he won the title from. He started slowly in that bout, finally accelerated, and won the final few rounds to nail down the decision, which had been in doubt a little earlier on. Another look there at uh, the wife of Rosario, and now Howard Davis's wife, the lady on the left. Getting back to Rosario, his first title defense, and that was the big test for the broken wrist in his right hand, was a knockout of Roberto Elizondo, 157 of round one. And here's the comparison of the two boxers now, and the comparison favors in height and in reach Howard Davis. He is three inches taller, will have a reach advantage of six inches over Rosario, but that shouldn't really bother Rosario, who's a solid kind of puncher. Contrasting styles here. Rosario, not the slowest man you'll ever see afoot, but Howard Davis' trademark is good speed, both hand speed and foot speed, and he'll be utilizing that. The one drawback is that quite often Howard Davis will deliver punches while not firmly planted on both feet. Rosario does that. That's the difference in power. And Howard Davis gets up at his toes. He can score, but not with the devastating power of his opponent today, the champion the from Puerto Rico. Boxing. Here are the rules. Mike what Jacobs. I want to do is ask you two things. And that's firstly, to observe those rules, and secondly, make it a good, clean, all-action contest. Is that understood? Yes, shake hands, shake hands, and come out fighting. Mike Jacobs, final words to the two boxers. It's a 10-point bus system here. The bell will not save a man except the final round. The free knockdown rule is waived. Mandatory eight count on knockdowns. There'll be no standing eight count. And that's just about it, except for the case of an accidental buck. We'll cover that as we go along, as the first round is underway. I'm anxious to see how Rosario starts. He started very slowly when he won the championship, as we told you, against Ramirez. And here, looks like he's ready to engage Howard Davis right away. It looks like more than a three-inch advantage in height, but that's what it's listed. Davis at 5'9", over Rosario. Rosario with the jab, the following right, glancing off the body of Davis. Very quick hands in the part of Rosario. The only hand speed in this ring doesn't belong to Howard Davis. Getting with the jab and flicking one off to the face of Davis a moment ago. Rosario forcing Davis to back up in the early seconds. This first round just barely a minute old. But Rosario is the champion with all that pride we talked about. Davis the challenger. 
as a big opportunity, his second world title challenge today. The first losing to uh, Chuck Scott right in Glasgow four years ago, Jim Watt, now onto the home turf of Rosario here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Very sparse first round action. Rosario expected he would take Davis out inside of six rounds. Davis back to say that Davis could take Rosario out and certainly can have part of him if it does go to 12 rounds. Left hook thrown by Rosario. A little over a minute left and this is the first round. WBC rules scheduled for 12. A smile on the face of Rosario as he clicked the jab and missed it for the second time. Three inches shorter, he's shooting those punches upstairs toward the head of Howard Davis when he does throw them. Davis, a quick jab, couldn't get the following right through, cuts it with the right hand. The crowd groans here with less than a minute to go in the first round. Davis casually turning his back on the champion. Rosario just 21. When Howard Davis was 21, he had just turned pro after winning his gold medal at the Olympics in Montreal in 1976. Less than 20 seconds to go in the first round. There's that quick left jab fucked up by the champion again. Looking left, partially landed by Howard Davis. Now, going to work is the champion Rosario as the seconds are winding down here. Just three seconds left in round number one, scheduled for 12. When you buy a new car, you want to keep it looking new. And that's easy with Armor All Protectant. A scientific formula that took a polymer chemist 10 years to develop. It helps keep rubber, vinyl, leather, and plastic looking new. So even though you can't keep your car from getting old, you can keep it from looking old. Armor All. It's science, but it works like magic. What makes Peerless America's number one do-it-yourself washerless faucet? It goes in fast, it's built to last. It's even warranted. It lasts a long, long time. No tools to use, you just can't lose. And look, it doesn't drip. It lasts a long, long time. Peerless washerless faucet installs in no time. It lasts a long time. It lasts a long, long time. Peerless installs in no time. Lasts a long time. Round two underway here in San Juan. The first round, fairly even. The distinguishing feature of that round was the late flurry by Rosario. In the final 20 or 25 seconds as he pinned Davis over on the ropes. And Davis had some redness over his left eye. They were looking out of the corner, but obviously nothing very serious at this early stage. As Rosario moved in, Davis cupped him three times with the left hand. Davis tending to hold his ground a little better now in the center of the ring, not backing up quite as much as he was in the first round. Both banks showing a fairly healthy respect for one another. It's a lot at stake. Chance for Rosario to firmly establish himself as one of the big lightweights in the world. He feels that people like Camacho and Mancini have taken their luster away from him, and of course being out 14 months with a broken wrist had a lot to do with that. Now on national television today, fighting in San Juan, he's got a chance to prove something. Howard Davis has got the opportunity for the second time in his pro career to make claim to a world title. As you heard earlier, he's the only one of the five from Montreal winning gold who has not been a world champion of one time or another in their professional career. Approaching the midway mark of this the second round. Again, a lot of movement. Very little in the way of punches being thrown. Rosario happy to contend with the quickness of Davis catches him there with a right hand, backs him against the rope. That's the most telling blow so far. Davis on the run, holding on now as Rosario chased him halfway across the ring. The rain, three or four good scoring blows. Davis responding with a right hook. Blinking his eyes now, bouncing up and down. And he goes, Howard Davis, quick run and is down here in the second round. Less than a minute to go, Davis will take the eighth count from the referee, Mike Jacobs. 
and he'll send him back into action. Rosario looking to move in and finish Davis off here in the second round. As you saw, he got him in trouble across the other side of the ring and finally connected with a solid blow that dropped Davis. Now Davis trying to buy some time, staying away from him, still has half a minute to survive the second round. It looks to be all right, his legs taking him around the ring very swiftly. Rosario, not being over anxious by waving in and making a mistake, is taking his time, perhaps too much, in going after a second knockdown of Davis. 15 seconds to go on the round now. Rosario has hardly thrown a punch since he knocked him down. Crowd doing that. Davis has had plenty of time to come around from that knockdown as the second round winds down. Howard Davis in trouble got out of it nicely. Rosario, afraid perhaps of being a little over anxious, a little impulsive, went the other way. The side of caution in going after him a second time. He said he got him in trouble. Howard Davis tried to recover, took that punching left hand. We talked about the right of Rosario. The left has got a lot of wallop too, as we'll have one more look from another angle. Davis just missed with his right, and the chopping left hand set him down in a hurry. He looks to be all right. Got a folks rather unconcerned about it all now, as Corner Man is one more look over the eye that caused him a little concern between the first and second round. Chanting Chapo, which is the nickname of the champion Rosario, but Davis still on his feet, did not even use that stool between rounds. And out he comes for round three, it is scheduled for 12. Remember Rosario said he expected he would take Howard Davis out in less than six rounds. His corner has told him to get busy again, and busy he is in the early seconds of this third round. Davis caught him with a good right that time, setting him up with the left. Rosario has so much power, he can catch you with either hand, obviously, at any time. And a very game, Howard Davis, bouncing off the canvas, ready to mix it with him here in round three. Davis holding on as they reach the one-minute mark of this third round. Now go to work on the final Rosario. Good guard held up high. Davis just evading that left hand again. And as the right was thrown, he stepped out of the way of that. Howard realizes he can't stand toe to toe with this man. He's got to keep moving. He could be constantly, which would be tiring, even for a boxer with the speed of Davis. Midway in the third round now. Snapping right hand, buckled the knees of Rosario. He takes the left, smiles at Davis now, but no question, the best shot that Davis has awarded on Rosario so far. Back and forth they go. Two very capable lightweights in search of the WBC World Championship here in San Juan. Davis striking out the left, missing with a following right hand. Another smile on the face of Rosario with a minute to go. And this is the third round. Davis has bounced back extremely well from the second round knockdown in full command right here, late in round number three, looking the sharpest he has been since the opening bell. Rosario with three jabs gets warded off by a looping left hook from the challenger Howard Davis. Rosario bullying him over on the ropes, about 30 seconds to go in the round. But the latter half of this round, in particular, a good stretch for Howard Davis. He appears to have taken some of the speed, some of the aggressiveness out of this area's attack. His knees just buckled ever so slightly about a minute and 20 seconds ago when he nailed it in the corner as this third round comes to an end. Most Air Express companies charge extra for delivery to out-of-the-way places. We don't. 
In fact, Federal Express can get your package to more places overnight than anybody. So if you have something that absolutely positively has to be somewhere, give us a call. <laughs> Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? This 4th of July, Roger Sherman is doing something a little different. He's painting his house. Grand Canyon, big deal. Because now through July 4th, Glidden Spread House Paint is on sale at Kmart in lots of colors for just $10.97. And when you can get Glidden at a Kmart price, it's worth sticking around for. Does this beat some boring old campground or what? Whoopee! Kmart, we got it back, we got it good. Down in round two, Howard Davis, late in the third round, this snapping right hand buckled the knees of Edward Rosario. But Rosario and Davis are into round four, and what is shaping up to be a most interesting WBC lightweight championship confrontation. Both obviously have been hurt here, and Davis, in our view, winning that third round, making a fight of it in a big way. There were many here in San Juan who didn't give Davis much of a chance because of Rosario's most impressive showing, especially with his last title defense and winning the title from Jose Luis Ramirez of Mexico. By the way, both men have agreed to take on Ramirez within 90 days and put the championship back on the line. But now, great body punches by the champion Rosario. Howard Davis forced to hang on a minute into this the fourth round in San Juan. Rosario taking the action to Davis. Back and forth they go. Davis pinned against the ropes, taking tremendous abuse from Rosario. First the body, then to the head. The jab, banding away with the right hand of the body. Picks the jab out again. Back now the left hook to the head, the right to the body. Bruising Howard Davis in every legal area. Midway in the fourth round, it's been a good one for Rosario. Davis missing with a combination. Third left thrown by Howard Davis, caught and flush on the jaw, and Rosario keeps coming in. You get the feeling it can't last very much longer, either way. Both men getting tremendous knockout opportunity. A little over a minute left in round number four now. Davis blinking off the shot from Rosario. Fresh again, waiting for his chance, taking his time. Unloads the right, blocked by the left hand of Rosario. So Howard Davis showing a big, big heart, coming off the canvas, hurting Rosario back in the last round, and taking a tremendous shot here again. And he has slowed the aggressiveness of Rosario again, as Rosario seems to attempt to stand in the corner just above us. Davis with a good combination, following right hook, had some effect on Rosario, 30 seconds to go on the round. The puffiness around the left eye and below of Rosario, who fires the jab into Davis and drives him out of the ropes. Come on, look at it. And the upper body speed, the flexibility of Davis simply allows him to lean out of the way of those blows. Round four coming to a close in San Juan. Now, Ford Ranger does it. Breaks out with a great low price. That's right, just $59.93 on the pickup with quality unbeaten by any major small truck maker. Based on a survey of owner-reported problems during the first three months. And Ranger has a wider cab than any small truck. Plus, power, payload, and tough twin I-beam suspension. Yes, Ford Ranger puts it all together. An 84 pickup at an 83 price. The best-built American trucks are built. Ford Tough. From Anheuser-Busch, here's L.A. Great taste and half the alcohol of our regular beers. You shaped this world and changed it. Made it better, rearranged it. In the way you think and what you drink and everything you do. L.A. For smooth taste and drinkability and only half the alcohol of our regular beers. For the way you live your life today. For the way you live. Davis's wife, Rosario's wife, left and right. One of their husbands will be the WBC lightweight champion when this day is over, but we have no way of knowing right now. 
Interesting bout. Both men have been in trouble. Davis was actually on the canvas, but has come back to who they won the last couple of rounds. They say that big heart of his showing through more and more as the fight continues. Number 28, Howard Davis, seven years as a pro, just now getting his second championship opportunity. And he seems unprepared to let that opportunity slip through his hand. But the toughness of Rosario is so evident. As we found out with the knockdown early in this bout in the second round. No question, fighting at home, Rosario is favored to win. Based on what he has done lately, you can't quarrel with that. You have to uh, admire what Howard Davis has accomplished so far in this bout. Rosario may be hard pressed to fulfill his knockout of Davis prediction inside six rounds. It is Davis now with the champion in the corner finally turning him around. Bring it out, step back, step back. They are coming up to the halfway mark in this round. And we would like to advise our stations at the end of this round, we'll be giving them a local station break. No break for Rosario and Howard Davis in this one. Rosario wants to keep what he's got, and Davis is intent on taking it away from him. Rosario with a jab. Davis partially got out of the way of it. He makes it up again over on those ropes. A little over a minute left in the fifth round now. Good snapping right hand came out to Davis. He pressed in on Rosario. Body shots by the champion. Davis holding on the break made by Mike Jacobs, the referee from London, England. Chopping right hand thrown by Davis effectively. And a jab by Rosario backs him away again. Another jab scores by the champion. The Rosario guard held high as Davis bangs away in that corner. Tries to hold him there. Gets his combinations off. But many of those blows were blocked by Rosario. Rosario content to stand there and just hang on. Both men have thrown an abundance of punches in this round. As a blazing blow, a left hand lands a chopping right hand by Rosario Lamb. We'll be back with more of the WBC World Lightweight Championship after this word from our local station. Now he stands there. Good question. We'll, we'll watch it. San Juan, this is the round, remember, Rosario said that uh, would be the upper limit for taking Howard Davis out. And now the referee wants to have a look at the glove in the left hand of Rosario. Some moisture on it. Wants to towel off, and now he lets them resume this the sixth round. The only test, apart from the test of time for the broken wrist here in the sixth round for Rosario, was that very brief appearance against Roberto Elizondo. That just lasted one minute and 57 seconds. You get the impression here in this sixth round that Rosario maybe is a little more reluctant to throw the right hand. I wonder if it's bothering or hurting him at all. It's 14 months since the injury. But that happened early in the bout with Ramirez and he fought on for the better part of 30 minutes with what turned out to be a broken wrist on the right hand. A 
men have gone in the sixth round as we approach the halfway mark of the scheduled 12-round test for the WBC Lightweight Championship. And Howard Davis, after the first couple of rounds, has fought magnificently. Right hook by Rosario, missing. Davis continuing to come on. He was backed up in the first couple of rounds. Of course, was knocked down very suddenly by a looping left hand by Rosario in the second round as we reach the midway point of this round six. As Davis blinked, he did not nevertheless take the full force of that right hand by Rosario. Rosario, who started fairly aggressively, is not fighting that way now. Davis very busy, raining punches all over him. And half of those got through as that left jab just did. The crowd here normally raging with emotion. On behalf of Rosario, very quiet by comparison because Howard Davis is more than making a fight of it. Davis at age 28, the last man of the Olympians to claim a world championship. He looks forward here today. Rosario, very conservative now, certainly, when you compare what he was doing earlier in this bout. He may be going into a bit of a mid-fight low, but whatever the reason, he's not throwing punches the way he was before, as he uses the left, but not the right hand again. A little over 20 seconds to go in the sixth round. Davis has been taking the action to him, much the busier of the two, and obviously the man who should get the scoring here in the sixth round, and the way we see it, take a lead at this stage of the WBC Lightweight Championship down in San Juan. No way! My towel tastes better! Hey! We got a right Original recipe To chicken done right The taste that says with just one bite Hey! It's the one and only Kentucky Fried Chicken We got a right To chicken done right Nobody does chicken like we do Pressure cooked to squeeze the herbs and spices into every juicy bite Kentucky Fried Chicken They do chicken right now, for 1984, Ford takes off with a great lineup of tough 4 by 4s To show you how tough they are, we're going to lower them into this giant crater and watch them try to climb out. Here's the full-size pickup with the most powerful 6 in any pickup, and Ranger with the most powerful V6 in any small truck, the trim Bronco 2 and full-size Bronco. The 84 Fords, tops for toughness. The best-built American trucks have built Ford Tough. Howard Davis, out for round seven, has not sat down since this fight started, standing in his corner between rounds and taking charge as the bout goes along. Here in his seventh round, a couple of snapping left hands to Rosario. Rosario in a real shell, whether it was the fact that he is having trouble penetrating the reach advantage of six inches that Davis enjoys, whether that wrist has been re-injured, the hand, the right hand is hurting, he simply isn't throwing it the way he was before. It was the wrist that was fractured? Could be a problem in that area. No question, a very conservative Rosarian at this stage. We'll past the halfway mark of the scheduled 12 rounders. It's pretty obvious that Howard Davis is the man gaining momentum. Good left hand thrown by Davis. Getting through that high guard, getting a little wider as the belt goes along, those hands held high by Rosario. And he is doing virtually nothing here. It's up to Davis to initiate the action whenever he chooses. Rosario knows there's time left yet. It's just the seventh round. Whether he's conserving strength for later on, we can't tell. He has only gone the 12-round distance once in his career, 10 rounds another time. The others all ended in TKOs and knockouts. And indeed, he did have Davis down here in the second round of this bout. We have a little over a minute to go in round number seven, and what action there has been, as you can see, has been supplied by Howard Davis. The 
quickly now because they're stunned at Rosario's inactivity. He fires a right hand out there finally after almost two minutes of this round. But he's not the man we saw fly from his school in the first round to take the action to Davis. He had Davis backing up there. Davis now almost at will, turning Rosario into whatever corner of the ring suits him. And then dictating the pace from there. Thirty seconds to go in round seven of this, the WBC Lightweight Championship from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Don Chevrolet with you on ABC's Wide World of Sports. It has been a good one. Good left, then a right thrown by Howard Davis. Two telling goals there late in this round. And you've got to give this round to Howard Davis, too, as has been the case with the previous four. Davis taking charge against the champion Edwin Rosario right here in his native country, Puerto Rico, in the city of San Juan. Round seven at an end now. Round number eight underway. Howard Davis has taken charge in this bout. His corner trainer, Manny Siaka, telling him that you are in charge now. You've got five rounds to go. They feel, as we do, that Howard Davis has the lead. Never underestimate the power of Edwin Rosario. He may be a sleeping giant out there. What about a giant of the man physically? He packs the wallop of one as 17 verifiable knockout victims can attest. He joined his lady and had Davis down with a snapping left hook in the second round. And in the following round, it was Davis who buckled the knees of Rosario, but failed to put him down. Once again, the pace being dictated by Howard Davis, Rosario to attempt to counterpunch his way off the ropes whenever he chooses. Davis, with a flashing left hand, drives him back out of those ropes. So the reach advantage is no question. A big one for Howard Davis as the fight continues. He can stand back out of harm's way. That's a six-inch advantage work for him while Rosario has to find a way to cut inside that. This crowd in San Juan dismayed by what Rosario hasn't done since the first couple of rounds. A very inactive champion in the ring here. And this is second defense of the title he won 14 months ago. His chance to prove that he is a premier lightweight. And so far, he is not convincing very many people of that in this test today. Just over a minute to go in this the eighth round. is the nickname worn around the belt of Rosario, and that's what you hear the crowd chanting in the background as he smiles after the light thrown by Davis that did connect. Whether it is an injured hand possibly or just the reach problem, Rosario shows no sign of coming out of the cell he went into in about the fourth round when Davis began to pull even in the fight. Then in the ensuing round, this is round eight, no question, Davis has taken charge. The referee does not vote. The three ringside judges from England, Venezuela, and Mexico will decide it if it does go to 12 round distance. Davis with the left. Aiming with the head. That's the bell to end the eighth round. They are two-thirds of the way through this WBC lightweight championship. So Rosario is running out of time in which to catch up, I would think, and impress the judges. Earlier, it was all Rosario as Howard Davis, despite his reach, backed up as he threw the right, missed with it. He got caught with a left hook. That was in round two, flat in his back. He bounced up quickly, stayed away from Rosario to balance of that round, then passed the midway mark of round three. Here was a solid right hand that buckled the knees of Rosario, but he did stay on his feet. In the middle. Another great fight coming up for you. Wide World of Sports will not be on the air because of the USFL playoffs the next two weeks. It returns July 14th. Junior middleweights, Wilfred Benitez and Davey Moore. Benitez, three-time world champion of the past, 
and Davey Moore, a former champion in this division. It'll be followed by the Firecracker 400, July the 14th. That both taking place in Monte Carlo. This one in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and the ninth round is underway. My scorecard shows that I haven't given a round to Rosario since the second. Which would mean Davis does indeed have a commanding lead. But the people to decide that for real are the ringside judges. You can't give points to a man who doesn't show any activity. And Rosario continues to sort of lay back. Let Davis, with a reach advantage at all, back him away to those ropes. I haven't detected that he has been reluctant to use the right hand because he really hasn't been eager to throw either hand the last five rounds. No question that Davis has gained confidence as this battle has continued. The awesome champion from Puerto Rico, except for that early knockdown, has been ended in Bob Austin to Howard Davis. Yet Davis must know he can't get too careless or wide open because the power of Rosario is still intact. A minute now to this ninth round. Davis in his previous title attempt lost the unanimous decision to Jim Watt and Glasgow Scotland. So at this stage, getting out of the final two rounds of his second attempt at a championship, he is indeed in much better shape. Reeled out 13 victories in a row, remember, leading up to this one, but Rosario has not lost in his entire career. The only loss for Rosario for Davis came in that title attempt against Watt in Glasgow in 1980. There's no question that Rosario needs points and needs to pile them up fairly consistently now unless he can catch Davis with a makeup blow. They boxed through about two minutes and missed the ninth round. Scheduled for 12 in San Juan, Puerto Rico, in a steamy, humid June afternoon. There's a combination that finally came through by Rosario. Not a devastating right, but one that was a scoring blow nonetheless. A little puffiness below the left eye of Rosario, nothing to be concerned with. There is a mark over the other eye of Davis, the left eye, but now again that sharp combination, the quick hands of Davis scoring in the Rosario corner. About 30 seconds to go in the ninth round. And apart from the odd flurry, as he bangs away to the body, Rosario not doing much in an attempt to catch up as he comes up short again, feeling to get inside the reach. And the quick upper body movement and feet of Howard Davis of Long Island, New York, a glancing light from Rosario Land. Just missing with a tab as Davis backed away from it. Davis with his left leading him in on the ropes once again. As they have gone through the ninth round with time running out on the champion from Puerto Rico, Edwin Rosario. And again, as he has done all day long, in that corner with the tenth round coming up, Howard Davis remains on his feet. Looking very, very fresh at 28. He's getting very close to a world championship if this continues. John, when you put pressure on you got to back your shot with some uppercuts, right uppercuts. We'll do it. Right uppercuts, we'll do it. Come on. This round, you got to win every round, John. It's his father, Howard Davis Sr. Give me some money. Trainer, Manny Siaka. Every round, you understand? And their advice is pretty sound. Just continue to do what he's been doing. And just put the pressure on Rosario. Rosario, who said he was in the best condition possible, has been sitting between each round. He looks like a tired boxer right now, this WBC lightweight champion. Up he comes for the 10th round. Scheduled for 12. and makes this crowd come alive for the first time in his round. Rosario pouring all over Davis in the corner, but Davis very deftly stepping out of trouble. He did take some stinging blows, though. Rosario continues to pour it out, bangs to the body, and fires the left hand up to the head that just missed. Rosario must realize now he needs the knockout to be sure of winning this one because it may be too late to get the points he has to compile. Body shots. 
Into the half, partially by Davis with the guard held up high. The elbows down, trying to guard the body, but Rosario, having a big tenth round, hangs away at the body of Davis, and Davis now has been steam taken out of him from all this punishment. The body shot, a half to be killing blows. He's guarding his head, but he's left the body open. He's taken half a dozen or more very sharp blows in the section. A new Rosario came off his stool to begin round ten. Not the tired boxer we had seen the previous half dozen rounds. They are just now coming up to the midway mark of the 10th round. Davis had to be surprised by the sudden vigor of Rosario coming at him to start this 10th. Because Edwin had done virtually nothing previously. Maybe he was saving it for a big finish. He went into his cell against Ramirez before finally dominating the late rounds against him to take the victory right here in San Juan. He almost left it too long at the crunch he's looking for, despite the impressive round he's enjoying right here. Rosario must be arm weary at this stage, considering the amount he has thrown the first couple of minutes of this round, about 50 seconds remaining in the tent. Despite the punishment he's taken. The aggressor, despite that right hand by Rosario, is Davis coming right in and catching it, less on the side of the face. So obviously the champion is plenty left as Davis fires the left hook. And missing with the left hand is Howard Davis. Less than 30 seconds to go in the 10th round. The best consistent action of the entire fight. Mostly by Rosario in the first couple, by Rosario in the closing seconds with a combination that scored right there. So he has won his 10th round in a big, big way. The champion Rosario has. Davis dancing around and trying to collect himself and take it to an 11th round. But there's no question. Catching up right now is the champion Rosario. I've suggested to you it's a matter of survival now in the 11th and 12th rounds. It's an almost desperate champion from San Juan. No doubt we'll come after him again. He did so brilliantly in the 10th round. Most impressive victory in any round by either man today. The scored by Rosario back there. Whichever way it goes, it's been a good one. It almost seemed mirror to the face of the intensity of showing how much he wants this championship. One of the him four years ago over in Scotland. Seven years of his life, boxing professionally, have brought him to this second chance. There's no guarantee there will be a third if he does not capitalize today. He fires two good left sides. Rosario now, more and more the aggressor as Davis is backing up. It was Rosario who laid back on the ropes. Now, initiating much of the action here in the 11th round as they tie up. Both men have been stunned in the early round. But the process of wearing down has gone both ways. I suspect more in the case of Rosario than Davis, who does look tired. He slipped down there. Comes up spiral. A little embarrassed about it all as we are at the midway part of the 11th round. Not a knockdown. He's at left again. Sends little Rosario backwards. Davis catching him on the way in, although a couple of punches, the right in particular landed by Rosario. The depth of this has to be respected too. He throws it in a real hurry. Now he'll go to work on the body again. That's what slowed Davis down appreciably back in that 10th round. Body shots were very telling. And he goes back to that same strategy now. With less than a minute to go on the 11th round. Davis has taken his share of punishment the last two rounds. Continues to lead here, we would suspect. Rosario looks for that big punch to take him out. But his prediction of finishing off Davis inside of six rounds has long since gone by the boards today. Final 20 seconds of the 11th round. 
Rosario, despite his desire and his heart, maybe a little too fatigued about a serious rally, but we're going to find out in this 12th and final round coming up. And given on fairly even terms after a big 10th round for Rosario. Round 11 comes to an end. Tomorrow, join acting great Peter. And a point well taken from uh, Manny Siaka and his father. There are the two wives of the Dodgers. A very concerned look, especially on the lady on the right, Edwin Rosario's wife. Why you got it? A point well taken that to beat a champion, especially in his hometown, you've got to take it right to him all the way to the final bell. Even in the final 30 seconds, you must look impressive to convince the judges you were good enough to take this championship away. Important for Davis to know. And while in the middle to late rounds, he was the dominant man. That just took his way by the late flurry, particularly in the 10th round by the champion. He was told to slip those punches, use the upper body to back out of the way of Rosario's thrust. That's what he appears to be doing here in this round. He knows he has to avoid any possibility of a knockout, and yet at the same time, He's got to remain fairly impressive with what he is doing. So a difficult balance has to be found for Howard Davis here in this 12th and final round. The WBC World Lightweight Championship. A good combination came through there. Davis has succeeded in silencing for the most part this crowd, partisan, in favor of Rosario in this 12th round. And they were hooping and hollering in the 10th when their man was on the attack. Good counter punching by Rosario there. Davis has to finally cover up after he initiated the action of this series. Now Rosario finishing up beautifully with the uppercut coming through. The chopping left hand. Shoulder to shoulder as you can see at the midway point of the 12th and final round. These two men have put on a tremendous show here in search of the title in San Juan. More body shots. And up to the head of the right hand. And Davis with a hook. And the straight left thrown by Davis. Both men have thrown a great many punches right here in this sequence. Never mind in the 12 rounds they have gone through. But Davis, as we told you, is aware of the fact that he cannot afford to let up. It's got to be a big and impressive finish for him to make sure of the decision. And of the two, Rosario looks to be the more tired of the stage as the referee Jacob separates them again, less than a minute to go on the bow. Good left thrown by Davis. He's doing what his corner told him, taking the field all the way, but left came out in trouble, and on the left and the right. A breaking right and jumping like the left hand. It is Rosario now the final flurry in the last 35 seconds. The crowd here in the Clemente Coliseum on its feet. Cheering this one as they will likely take it right down to the bell. It is a ball of the 12th round. Two hungry boxers. One trying to keep his championship. The other almost desperate to take it away from him. Coming down to the final 10 seconds. This glory now belongs. Oh, here's the punch. Davis with 10 seconds to do. He back up again. Just three seconds to go. He was taking the action to him again. And got caught once again. That's the bell. The wealth under Davis' eye. The smile from both fighters. But the lightning quick attack of Rosario struck just before the bell. Davis was able to survive it. Two knockdowns scored by Rosario in this fight of the second of 12 rounds. Here it is again. Time ticking down. Davis on the attack. Bang! The suddenness of Rosario's power surprised and floored Davis. It was the left hand again. The same punch that took him down in round two. This has been quite a day in a fight that Rosario made very close in the latter rounds after he'd fallen behind after taking charge early. It'll go to a decision. The three right side judges will decide it. We'll have that decision for you from If you think all running shoes give you the same protection, you're in for it. Brought to you by 
the Cards and Travelers Chance. Accept it around the corner, around the world. You can do it, and we'd like to help. Pizza. By Bud Light. The best is a taste on its own. Satisfying the double filling. So ask for Bud Light. And by AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Rosario's family, eight-month-old baby, Ruby, has joined him in the ring as they await the decision. The judges have a tough decision to make, and it may come down to that 12th round, although we thought that Davis had piled up enough points in the middle round to have a comfortable lead at his rounds three through about nine. A big tip for Rosario. Might have won that by more than a point. They might have given him the edge of the 11th round, and apart from a knockdown, the 12th round was very even, too. But we repeat, when a challenger comes in to face a champion, certainly in his hometown, he had better win very, very convincingly. And Howard Davis was very well aware of that, except he couldn't fend off the left hook that dropped him with just four seconds to go in the bout. And that left hook may be the determining factor in the eyes of the judges. We'll have to wait and see. But either way, Davis acquitted himself very well for a man given virtually little chance by many here in San Juan. And they said his best years to pro and he had difficulty adjusting from amateur ranks to professional boxing might have been behind him. He racked up 13 wins in a row, and yet there were those who said the 13 really weren't that big. He didn't have the knockout punch. Well, he certainly had enough combinations and enough jabs and hooks to score well. And here's this knockdown of the 12th round that surprised everybody and certainly nobody more than Howard Davis. He was taking the attack to him. The left hook caught him. Bounced back up again to await this decision. One more look at it. And it happened to him before in the second round.